Joining me now is Republican Representative Tom McClintock. Congressman, great to see you. Thanks for coming in. Oh, it's a pleasure, Liz. Thanks for having me. So what do you think? Should the president declare a national emergency if they balk on funding for the wall? Absolutely. He has that authority. It was granted to the president back in 1976 to reprogram unobligated military construction funds uh, for the defense of our country. And I can't think of anything more central to the defense of our country than the security of our southern border with 60,000 people a month uh, illegally crossing it. Uh, uh, he actually has more money at his disposal on that route, about $13 billion, uh, uh, much more than he is uh, requesting of Congress. Uh, not only that, but he doesn't have to make any compromises if he uses that authority. And I think this puts him in a very strong position over the next three weeks to say, look, Democrats, I have had an open door for a month and a half. You have spurned it. Uh, uh, we've now reopened the government, uh, uh, and now we're going to discuss this. Uh, but yeah. I don't have to. I don't have to compromise. I can do this myself. Mm. So I, I, I think it's in the best interest of the Democrats to come to the table. Otherwise, they're not going to get DACA. They're not going to get uh, any of the things that they've been demanding. Uh, you know, since to your point, since the mid '70s, the, we've had national emergencies uh, for things like diamonds coming out of Sierra Leone, and uh, swine flu. So that's according to government information. I'd like your reaction to this. Uh, you know, the outcry about what's been going on. Uh, in D.C., we have liberal activist and filmmaker Michael Moore. He's really fanning some very divisive flames he here. He's urging people to break the law and not file t your tax returns in protest of the shutdown. Watch. And we, the people, we shouldn't be supporting anything that requires someone who's not paid working for us. We should not fly. You know, that, uh, don't fill out your tax return. What do you think of that, sir? Well, what he's doing is advising people to uh, uh, place themselves in grave legal jeopardy. Uh, that's crying fire in a crowded theater. It's irresponsible, uh, and anybody who listens to him is putting themselves in great legal jeopardy. Do you think President Trump is on his back heels now, or is he in a stronger position? Because he has been giving up uh, key concessions about State of the Union, uh, reopening the government with no money for the wall. And, you know, what do the Democrats trade for this deal? Well, he's been over backwards to uh, work a deal with the Democrats. He invited uh, Democratic freshmen to, to come to the White House to discuss uh, uh, how we resolve the impasse. Uh, they refused even to come meet with him. Remember, they had plenty of time to go vacation in Puerto Rico, but they couldn't spare an hour out of their busy schedules to come and talk to the president about reopening the government. The president uh, modified his uh, requests on a number of occasions. He reduced the amount uh, he was originally requesting. He made modifications in the uh, board order designed to meet Democratic uh, objections. Uh, uh, he went out of his way to compromise with the Democrats, and all of those efforts were completely spurned. Uh, he's now realized you know, that, that you know, he's, he's got to do something. We cannot continue this impasse. The air traffic system is starting to buckle. Uh, so he was the adult in the room and said, OK, we're going to open this for the next three weeks. But at the end of that three weeks, if we don't have a deal, I'm going to use my own authority, and I certainly would strongly support his using it. OK, Congressman McClintock, great to see you, sir. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Thanks, okay, Liz. Thanks up. for having me.